welcome to our United for Math series on subtraction. In this series, we're going to be looking at some different ways that students can subtract that are different from that standard algorithm that we're used to. Sometimes just learning the process of something isn't enough. Students aren't really understanding the number sense. So we're going to look at some different ways. And we're going to start first with estimating differences. And when we're estimating, we're going to be rounding both of our numbers first and then subtracting. When we do that, we're getting like a roundabout answer, something that's close to the actual answer. And if students can estimate that difference, when they actually find the real difference, what they're going to be able to do is compare those two and see if they're pretty close. So let's get started with our first example. In this problem, we have 427 minus 168. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take these two numbers and we want to round them to the highest place value. So in this top number, it's the 4 in the hundreds place, and then we have the 1 in the hundreds place here. So we're going to subtract these numbers, and just so that they know, remember that always the larger number is on top. So let's start with that larger number, 427, and we're going to use those rounding skills that we learned in our previous series. So we're going to look at our number next door, which is a 2, and I know if it's 5 or more, I'm going to raise the score or round up, or if it's 4 or less, which in this case it's a 2, that 4 is going to stay the same. So that means that 427 is closer to 400 than 500. Now let's look at the second number. We have 168. So we want to decide if that's closer to 100 or 200. So we're going to look at that second digit to the neighbor next door. It's a 6, which is 5 or more, so I'm going to raise the score or round up with this 1. So 1 becomes a 2 and the rest becomes zeros. So my new problem is 400 minus 200. So I want to find the difference of that to get a good estimate. So 4 minus 2 is 2, and the rest are zeros. So 400 minus 200 is 200. So my estimate for this problem is 200, which means the answer to this problem, the difference, will be somewhere close to 200. Remember that when you're finding estimates, if you're rounding both of those numbers up, that your estimate is going to be a little high. And if you're rounding both the numbers down, that estimate's going to be a little low. If you have one that goes up and one that goes down, like we did in that first example, you're going to see one that's pretty close to the actual answer. So let's take a look at another problem. In this example, we have 750 minus 88. So you can see that these don't end in the same place value. We have the hundreds place here and the tens place here. But we're always rounding each number to its highest place value. So we're looking at this 7 in the hundreds place here, but this doesn't have a hundreds, and we don't want to round all the way up to a hundred, and we wouldn't want to go all the way to zero. So we're going to go right to the tens place because it's this number's largest place value. So if we're rounding 750, we're looking at the number next door, which is 5, 5 or more, raise the score, so we're going to round up, and this 7 becomes an 8. So 750 rounds to 800. And we can see that that's a little high because 750 is in the middle of 700 and 800. Now we have 88. So we're going to look at the number next door, which is an 8. 8 is 5 or more, so we're going to round up. So 88 becomes 90. Remember, when you're dealing with numbers that are not ending in the same place value, to line those place values up so that you're um, subtracting the right numbers. So we have 800 minus 90. If I'm using my mental math skills, I can say 800 minus 100 would be 700, and then we'd add that 10 back. So that means that our answer is 710. We ended with 710 there, and we're starting with 750. Well, we're, it's really an estimate, and we rounded both those numbers up, so we know it's going to be a bit higher than the actual answer. So ending with 710 when we're starting with 750, eh, it's a little off but students will be somewhat close to it. If they're way out there and have extra place values or different numbers, they're going to know that they're not in the right ballpark. And that's where that reasonableness comes in. If you have a reasonable estimate, it's pretty close to the actual answer. So I hope this helped you understand estimating differences. And remember, a difference is an answer to a subtraction problem. I'll see you in our next lesson where we start exploring those different strategies. Thank you again for joining us at United for Math.